Former President Trump overnight saying he hopes to take his case to the country's highest court, posting the Supreme Court must decide, as he now braces for what could come at his sentencing in six weeks. The judge could decide to say, hey, house arrest or even jail. How do you face what that could look like? I'm okay with it. An extraordinary moment after his unprecedented felony conviction on 34 counts of falsifying business records. The penalty is now ranging from probation to prison time, which is technically possible, legal experts say, but highly unlikely. I'm not sure the public would stand for it. I think it would be tough for the public to take. You know, at a certain point, there's a breaking point. That ominous-sounding suggestion coming in an interview before Mr. Trump's appearance at a UFC fight Saturday night as he also tries to distance himself from those lock her up chants about his 2016 opponent, Hillary Clinton. They all said lock her up, and I felt, and I could have done it, but I felt it would have been a terrible thing. And then this happened to me. Hillary Clinton, I didn't say lock her up, but the people would all say lock her up, lock her up. In reality, though Clinton was never convicted of any crime, Mr. Trump did say lock her up repeatedly. For what, for what she's done, they should lock her up. Lock her up is right. Since the conviction Thursday, the RNC says the committee and campaign have raised $70 million online, a massive haul. There's no doubt that this verdict has actually brought unifying our party. But multiple polls this weekend find majorities of Americans agreeing with the guilty verdict, with the Biden-Trump race overall remaining deadlocked, as it's been for months. Most top Republicans falling in line behind the presumptive GOP nominee. We have to fight back, and we will, with everything in our arsenal. But we do that within the confines of the rule of law. As President Biden himself issues a warning about GOP rhetoric. And it's reckless, it's dangerous, it's irresponsible for anyone to say this was rigged just because they don't like the verdict. I completely agree with the president. I will say, words do matter. Mm-hmm. And um, I, I noticed something different with what Mike Johnson said compared to Donald Trump. Donald Trump says we're at the breaking point. And Mike Johnson there said we must fight back. Mm-hmm. But he said we must fight back within the confines of the rule of law. Okay. Well, that's important. That's important. That's like, it's all right for us to say we have to fight politically at the ballot box, et cetera, et cetera. That's how politicians have always spoken until we get to Donald Trump, who talks about, uh, you know, telling the Proud Boys to stand back and stand by or saying, come to Washington on January 6th, it will be wild, or saying, Lawrence O'Donnell, that we are at a, quote, breaking point. Coded language for a man who started uh, the worst riot, uh, political riot in American history in Washington, D.C. since since the Civil War. I mean, I mean, it was, it, 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 this is this this guy was the author of that riot. And now he's it looks like he's trying to provoke again. Yeah. And Joe, it, it's obviously. Uh, aspirational on, on his part. When he says breaking point, he's hoping for the breaking point. Right. But, but he saw the crowds that did not show up at the Manhattan courthouse. And you'll remember that he summoned them uh, when they, just before the indictment was announced uh, last year, uh, and, and, and they didn't come. They never showed up. So, you know, people think, oh, well, there's no Trump voters uh, in New York City. Uh, there's 85,000 of them. On the island of Manhattan alone, 85,000 of them. Uh, When you add in Brooklyn, Queens, nearby New Jersey, uh, northern suburbs, there's a few million Trump voters within an hour of that courthouse. They did not come. They are not motivated to go out there and protest for him over his conduct with Stormy Daniels and what he did to cover it up. And I don't believe that there is any serious threat of what Donald Trump would be hoping for, which is some kind of rerun of January 6th. You got to remember how many of those people are in prison uh, and the rest of them, you know, their mothers are telling them, don't do that again. And uh, I, I just don't think that threat is really there. Yeah. You know, the thing is, it's also interesting that you, you look at the polls, Lawrence, that, that Hallie had in her piece. Mm-hmm. I mean, two polls, one of them was something like 57% to mm-hmm. 27%. I, I saw it very quickly, but it was like a 25, 30 point spread on people th- who believed the conviction was, was the right result in the trial. I, 
And then you have Republicans coming out and saying, oh, the United States is like Castro's Cuba. The United States is like uh, Stalin's Soviet Union. I know a lot of people freak out. Their hair gets on fire. They run around in circles. All I see is a former politician. I'm sure all you see is somebody that like has been in this world forever. I just see a party moving further and further and further away from the very independents and swing voters they have to pick up in Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania. Yeah, they they absolutely are, Joe. And and when you look at that number, 57% think the verdict was correct. That's without those people being able to watch the trial on TV. If they could have watched it on mm -hmm. TV, that number would have been significantly higher because they would have seen that Judge Juan Marchand was the model of what they would hope a judge would be if a member of their family was on trial in that courtroom. Uh, they would see that the Trump lawyers were winning all sorts of arguments with the judge all the time. The judge was sustaining their objections. The judge was agreeing with them uh, in certain motions arguments that they made. Uh, and no one got to see that. Donald Trump got to go out and tell his followers how bad the judge was uh, every day, even when the judge was ruling in Donald Trump's favor. And so television uh, would have really shown everyone right. uh, just how fair this was. And there'd be the hardcore who would absolutely never agree that it was a fair trial. But 57% thinking that was a fair outcome without even being able to see wow. it. it, it, right. it the telev television would have been the most valuable asset in this particular trial. Also yeah. with us this morning, the host of Morning Edition and Up First on NPR, Steve Inskeep, and Washington Post opinion editor and writer, Alexi McCammond. Also, Politico's Jonathan Lemire, of course, is still with us. I mean, this is just, <clears throat> just like an all-star cast. You know, when it growing is. up, they had like Night of the Thousand Stars. And here we are. <laughs> We've got them here in the morning. In the fourth I really, hour. It's, it's, really, it's really pretty incredible. Uh, Steve, let me go to you. Uh, look, I, let's put these polls up again. And again, they're only polls, they're only snapshots. They certainly understand that. At the same time, when you have this ABC Ipsos poll, a 50 to 27 split, uh, CBS a 57 to 43 split. Again, this could all change, uh, but but I would tell you the, these snapshots certainly show uh, the Republican Party. Um, you know, 27 percent may believe that 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 verdict makes us Castro's Cuba or Stalin's Soviet Union, but I doubt even those people are buying the Republican line right now. Maybe not a lot of people are buying that line, but I suppose one of the questions is how much difference does it ultimately make in the election, in people's votes? Uh, I've looked at different surveys about that. I'm sure you have as well. And I also, to understand that, try to look a little bit into history to ask what happens when somebody who's been convicted of a felony, who's even served prison time, runs again and sometimes in a democracy, people vote for that guy. In the city where I am right now, Washington, D.C., Marion Barry won a fourth term as mayor after going to prison. James Michael Curley was mayor of Boston after going to prison, served one of his terms while in prison. And I even thought of Hugo Chavez, who was elected in a democratic election in Venezuela as the leader of that country after going to prison for a coup attempt. The reason being, I think, that people vote on their own interests, not the morality of the person that they're voting for. And some political leaders do manage to take their trial, take their conviction, and make it part of a narrative that attracts support. That's going to be one of the things we'll need to watch for in the months ahead. So, Alexi, let's dive in a little more on the politics of this. We have seen the Republicans already with only a few exceptions, really rally around Donald Trump, adopt his talking points. This is a witch hunt uh, and suggest that it was a travesty of justice ordered up by President Biden. Of course, we know that's not true. Democrats, though, seem a little more split into how they're going to handle this. Some have been very aggressive, others far more muted, suggesting they don't want to be seen as, you know, putting their thumb on this scale. President Biden, we heard him speak about the need to respect the verdict. His campaign's been a little more aggressive. We'll see if they go more so. So talk to us about the debate among Democrats to how to try to capitalize on this, because some have told me, well, why should we talk about it? It's not breaking through. But the counter from other Democrats is, well, isn't it our job to make it break through? 
And this is a question that's been plaguing Democrats since Hillary Clinton lost in 2016, as you know well, right? How much should they talk about Donald Trump and his daily controversies? This is obviously more than just a controversy, and it's historic. And so for those reasons, of course, they should talk about it. But Democrats know the perils of adding to the idea that this was just a political hit job against Donald Trump already. I think that what is more effective with voters is not reminding them that he's a convicted felon, no matter what polls say, or, you know, that he was charged on all 34 counts, but using this moment, this conviction, to remind voters of his character, of the underlying facts about who he is that are represented in this case. He lies. He cheats. He steals. He manipulates. He cheats on his wife and has affairs. He will do whatever he needs to do to gaslight you to make sure that his version of reality is accepted. That did not fly in a court of law, and that is what Democrats should remind folks of.